So it's official. Red just announced the brand new Komodo X. And we got a lot of things to talk about because it seems like it's a perfect replacement for the original Komodo. So does that mean it's time to upgrade? And if that's the case, why are they still selling the original Komodo? So first let's start with the specs on the new Komodo X. Also from this point forward, I'm probably just gonna call it the KX or the X because Komodo X is a really long name. So the KX sports a 6K sensor, very similar to the previous Komodo. However, this new version can now shoot at up to 80 frames per second in 6K. It can also shoot at up to 120 frames per second in 4K. However, this is all being done in RAW, which means when shooting in 4K, there will be a slight windowing on the sensor. Now we'll touch more about this later, but this is an entirely new sensor. So this is not the same sensor from the Komodo, which makes me really excited because it should fix a lot of the issues that some of us as Komodo owners have been dealing with, such as low light. But we're not looking at just a new sensor here. They have redone the body of this camera, basically turning it into a sort of mini V Raptor. What I mean by this is the camera in size at a quick glance looks to be exactly the same. However, it is a bit longer and that extra length has a lot to do with the new IO ports and battery setup on the back of the camera. See on the back of the camera now, instead of the two Canon BP batteries, you now have a micro V-Lock system in place. Also, you're gonna see that new IO arrangement. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this new design as the original IO on the back of the Komodo could be hard to deal with, especially once batteries were installed. However, on this new setup, you're gonna find that your Wi-Fi antenna has been moved from the right side of the camera to the back. You'll also find your SD port here your new five pin limo audio jack you have your extension ports back here as well as your dc power ports now it isn't just on the back of this camera where a lot of changes were made there were a few changes added to the front as well now you're going to find a locking rf mount on the front as well as a secondary record button which i actually love because my raptor has a record button on the right side and on the front and now the komodo x will have that as well Speaking of having things in common with the Raptor, now the Komodo X is going to be using CF Express type B cards, which as far as my experience goes, these cards are not only more reliable, but they're easier to find and quite honestly, they're just easier to work with. I mean, with the Komodo working with CFAS cards, when this camera came out, that made a lot of sense. However, CF Express type B cards have just proven to be much better cards overall. And so seeing that move over to the Komodo system makes for in my opinion, just a better overall workflow. So we briefly broken down what this camera is, but now let's talk a little bit about who this camera is for. See, I have my own theories, although I think they're probably pretty accurate, but when Red first announced the Komodo, the original Komodo, this camera was designed to be a crash cam, to be used in movies on FPV drones and to be put in situations where a regular size Red camera just wouldn't really fit. However, the industry spoke and the industry spoke loud. So many people adopted the Komodo as just their standard A-cam. I mean, for the first time, you could get your hands on a RED camera that shot RED RAW for only $6,000. And so many people figured out ways to make the Komodo their main camera. However, most of us, myself included, were trying to figure out workarounds because there were certain things that the Komodo just didn't have. For example, one of those things was like a V-mount solution. A lot of companies like, actually, I think I have one, hold on. Yeah, something like this. So a lot of companies like Anton Bauer made adapters that you could actually attach to the back of your Komodo in order to actually use those micro V-mounts on the back of the camera. But RED has done something new with this Komodo X. I think they've really listened to the industry and listened to their users and said, how can we make a better Komodo? I mean, now, for example, the Komodo has that five pin limo on the back, which is going to just allow you to get XLR audio directly into camera. And personally, as someone who uses that exact same system on the Raptor, that five pin limo attachment is just a much better option than just a 3.5 millimeter jack option. Another benefit here is now that the KX will actually work with that 7 inch small HD touchscreen that RED developed for the Raptor, now it's going to be able to work with your Komodo. 
This means you don't need to have an SDI cable running throughout your camera in order to have a good monitor. You can attach it directly to the pins and it's just gonna work. So I know what you're asking yourself. Well, Brandon, should I be upgrading from the Komodo to the Komodo X? Or maybe you're just in a situation where you haven't purchased either Komodo yet and you're in the market. Well, here are a few reasons why you might actually want to upgrade. Well, when it comes to the original Komodo, I absolutely loved it. However, a few of my personal kind of like issues with the camera was one, it's lack of higher frame rates and two, it's inability to shoot really well in low light. And those are two major benefits that have been updated on the Komodo X. With this new sensor, as we've seen from some of the test footage from CVP, the Komodo X now shoots much better in low light compared to the original Komodo. Also, when it comes to those higher frame rates, they just really exist. I mean, there have been times where I've taken the Komodo and I would push it to its 40 frames per second, but it was never truly enough for some of those high frame rate shots. And that's actually one of the major reasons why I pushed myself to moving up to the Red V Raptor was because it gave me some of those higher frame rate options. And honestly, the images that come out of the Raptor are just simply gorgeous. But when it comes to looking at the new Komodo X, you're not just gonna get an improvement in low light and higher frame rates, but you're also gonna get an improvement in just the usability of the camera. And another reason why this camera might be worth upgrading to, and this is gonna be very niche use cases, but they actually added in a USB-C port to the back of this camera, which allows you to attach a direct ethernet cable to this camera via an adapter. And this is gonna be fantastic for those people who are gonna to wanna to use this camera in live streaming situations. I mean, they really did listen to the users and gave us every additional update that we've been looking for on the Komodo. But with that being said, the original Komodo is still for sale and I still think it's a really good camera. So if you are someone who is thinking about getting the Komodo X, but you don't wanna spend the extra $4,000 and all of the things I just mentioned to you don't really seem like they're going to be that big of an improvement for you. I think the original Komodo is still gonna be a fantastic camera. I mean, the accessories for this camera are crazy at this point. I mean, you have accessories where you can attach a V-mount battery to the back of it. There are accessories that will allow you to do 3.5 to XLR if you did want to get XLR going into this camera. And then of course, it still has its own range of IO ports on the back, which means you can still attach things like SDI monitors and you can have control over those SDI monitors using a cable on certain monitors like port keys or small HD. You know, the Red Komodo was my first entry into owning a Red camera. And since then, I've also bought the Raptor. And so since the Komodo X sits kind of perfectly in the middle, I'm really interested to get my hands on this camera and test it out for myself to see just exactly how close it falls to one or the other. But be sure to hit that subscribe button because you can rest assured I will be getting my hands on the camera as soon as I possibly can. So subscribe so you don't miss that video. Also leave any questions you guys have about the Komodo X down below in the comments. I'll be sourcing that as a place to not only answer your questions after this video actually goes live, but also sourcing that as a place for inspiration for my video on the Komodo X. Thank you to all of the members of the Creative Fam Academy who helped support this channel. I mean, I couldn't make videos like this if it wasn't for you guys' support. So thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.